Hello and welcome once again to another Vietnam Flames War hobby tutorial. Cool subject this time. Really think you're going to enjoy it. The Huey Cobra. Got a lot to go over, so buckle in. Let's get started. Now I personally prefer to paint the aircraft stands for my armies rather than leave them clear. I think they look cooler that way personally. But before you can do that, you need to take an emery board and scuff up the top of the surface completely, all of it. Because the, the smooth surface there will not allow the PVA and water mix to adhere to it properly. Okay, So once you've scuffed it up, do the 2 to 1 mix of PVA glue and water and just paint it right on top there with, a, uh, with an old brush. All right. And if you don't believe me on the whole scuffing thing, try it yourself and you'll see. It just does not work. All right. So make sure you do that every little bit. Now, once you got the top of the base completely covered, uh, now what I've done is I've taken some of the GF9 uh, Rocky Base and Grit and just kind of drop a few random pieces, you know, here and there. And these will be rocks. And then I bring out a small tub of fine sand and drop that on there to give me some, some nice fine texture. Uh, that will pick up the dry brushing really, really nice, but not look out of scale or anything like that. So once you have it all on there, take this, set it aside, let it completely dry. All right. Once that's done, uh, take some chocolate brown, water it down a bit so you can get it to penetrate all between all the nooks and crannies of the rocks and the sand and everything, and completely paint the top of the base chocolate brown. Once that's done, give it a pretty good dry brush of beige brown. Okay, I know it's not turning up too well in the video here, but uh, um, it believe me, it will. Pick up all that nice texture, you know, don't worry about hitting the rocks and things, just, just get it all. And try to avoid streaks, so make sure you remove the vast majority of the paint from the brush before you go. Better to build up, you know, in small layers rather than try to do too much at once, okay? And then finally for the soil, uh, we do a dry brush of dark sand. Um, this is going to be a little bit lighter. You want to be a little more careful with this one. You don't want to go too crazy with it. But as you can see here, that, that light color makes the, the, the soil pop out quite nicely. So, so once you're happy with that, uh, I took out my London Gray and painted all the rocks of the, the, the rocky grit that I dropped on there. I paint them all with this. Once that's done, they get a, with a small dry brush, they get a light dry brush of sky gray. Next, I'll take that same mix of 2 to 1 PVA glue to water and paint it on with an old brush and rough patches. Anywhere where you might have screwed up like one of the rocks popped off and you're dry brushing or left a bare spot or anything unsightly, cover it up with the glue. Okay. Then I'll just take a little tweezers and just kind of pack on some of the uh, GF9 uh, green static grass. Uh, let that dry blow off the excess. And then I'll finish the base up just by painting the edge uh, beige brown. And we set that aside. Done. Okay, now I'm, gonna, I'm working on the rotors here. Um, and... I'm painting this whole like transmission bits here, uh, gunmetal gray. Now, if if you're careful when you line up the polarities, the rare earth magnets, when you glue them onto the rotors and onto the flight stand and the hull of your helicopter, um, you can set up kind of an old, take another magnet and set it up like on another old, you know, another spare flight stand or you know a clothespin or something, and that way you can, you know, put the uh, the rotors right on there and let the magnet hold it in place. While you uh, while you work with it, you know, just a little extra step, make it a little more convenient. But uh, given that the the finish is so bright on that on that transmission area, uh, even though I personally normally go for more of a of a dull look, uh, I think gunmetal gray works works quite nicely here for that. And oh, by the way, this rotor this rotor was undercoated using the German early war war paint spray, okay, because that's the dark German gray color. But if you don't have that, you can undercoat it uh, just black and then paint the rotors German gray. Your choice. 
Okay, um, after that, on the end, the, the tips of the, uh, the blade, the rotor blades, I'll paint deep yellow. Uh, try and make sure that your paint is nice and thin so you don't have any uh, uh, brush strokes show up in there. Um, if you don't have a steady hand, you could always take some masking tape and literally mask off the end there so you get a nice crisp uh, straight line. Um, but, uh, you know, whatever works for you basically. Um, you'll probably end up needing to give it uh, a couple of three, uh, three layers of this, uh, you know, painting that painting that uh, the yellow right over the German gray. Now you could of course you know take a light gray color or white and paint it on that and then take the yellow but for such a relatively small surface area I think just uh, just doing a couple layers of the yellow uh, as long as it's watered down um, uh, it'll, it'll be fine. See, you get to your second layer there, and it looks fine, so no worries. So once you finish with that, uh, we do we take a small dry brush, and we do a, a light dry brush of oily steel, a little bit brighter, uh, just to make that metal uh, pop a little bit more. Um, you, if you wanted to go with something brighter, like a silver color, even brighter than that, you could. You know, personal preference. But uh, once you finish dry brushing on the oily steel, you're pretty, you're done with your rotor blades. So you can set those aside, and uh, we can get to the stake, the helicopter. All right. So the first step I um, I'm hitting here with this uh, with the Cobra is I'm painting German gray on the uh, chin turret. I'm painting it on the canopy and kind of the the edges of the canopy um, and I'm also painting the tail rotor and the the transmission you know gear bits of that German gray as well. Now you see here again that kind of sp like if you look on the website you'll send reference photographs you'll see you got that like straight line that kind of goes from the top of that panel line to the the end of the nose cone there I was painting kind of freehand but if you you know don't feel as confident then definitely feel free to use a piece of masking tape and just mask that off and get a perfect straight line whatever you want to do but you can see here basically my method for painting the canopy here is I paint the outside edges carefully with the German gray and then uh, you know, by painting all the edges, then I can just go back on the inside and just quickly fill it in like I'm doing right there. We're going to be doing a pretty simple paint job for the canopy rather than trying to go for like reflected glass or, you know, any kind of like blue to white gradient or, or anything like that. Um, you can certainly do that, but it's, they can be difficult to pull off sometimes. Uh, and I thought, you know, honestly, for the color I've chosen for the canopy here, I think you'll like it. You be the judge when we get to that part. See what you think. And uh, if it's something you don't really care for, then you can always go off of some of the examples on our website and on the War Games Illustrated site. Personal preference. So once you get all that done, uh, we've got that little uh, light on top there. I base coated it in hull red, which is a pretty, which is a pretty dark red. And once that was dry, I then highlighted it with flat red. So basically, I painted flat red right on top of it, but kind of left a thin ring of the hull red at the bottom. All right, now we're going to paint the, uh, the, the cockpit glass, and uh, based on the, uh, the painting article, painting suggestions from the War Games Illustrated site, uh, they suggested uh, Luftwaffe uniform 
is a good color, good neutral color for uh, the windows, and I absolutely agree. So you'll see I'm leaving behind the German gray to sh kind of show the frame of the uh, of the canopy there, and then just repeating the same way I did before of carefully painting the outside lines of uh, of what I'm trying to do, and then just quickly filling in and, and moving on to the next uh, the next part. Okay, next, um, I'm going to paint some gunmetal gray. Uh, that's going to be right on the, the end of the, the nose there. I'm going to paint that as well on the uh, tail rotor um, uh, and the transmission part back there as well, just like you can see here. All done. Looks good. All right, and just like we did with the main rotor, going to paint the deep yellow on the ends there. Not going to show you the whole thing. You get the idea. Even easier this time doing it there. Make sure you get both sides. Okay, and like I did with the main rotors, I'm going to do a quick dry brush of oily steel. I'm also going to hit the uh, German gray on the chin turret um, and just get that uh, you know a little bit of pop there. You'll notice how good of a connection the aircraft flight stand with the magnet has with the with the chopper. I mean, it's it's really nice. Definitely not floppy around or anything. Okay, uh, like I like to do, I've done in my other videos, I'm painting on gloss varnish on all the sites where I plan to put decals. There's actually quite a few decals to, to put on this, and I didn't even go with all the options. This will make sure that the surface is smooth and make the decals look as nice as possible. No silvering or gaps or anything like that. Now you can see here I kind of misaligned this uh, decal when I first put it on. But it's important, don't panic if this happens to you. Just moisten the bristles of your brush, get some water on there so the decal can swim around and just carefully tease it into place just like I've done here and it will all be fine. Tuck that on right there. Use a little decal softener. If you've got any, you know, want to try to get it to conform to all the curves and things and you're seeing gaps and it's not working out quite right, uh, absolutely use some, some decal softener on there. No problem. Now, once these are all done um, and the, the decals are in place and dry, we'll paint a gloss varnish over, over top of all of them, once again, to help seal them in and protect them. Once that's done, we matte varnish the entire chopper. Okay, now after that's done, I want to get my canopy back to looking like, you know, glass. So I'll just paint some uh, gloss varnish on there. Then finally, I'll take a little bit of MIG black smoke and kind of dust the front ends of the, uh, the rocket pods. That looks kind of cool, you know, like missiles have been fl flying off. And then the exhaust back there, I'll just fill that in to where it's uh, nice and dark and then ha actually have a little bit more of it kind of uh, come over the edges, you know, like it's like exhaust, you know, soot and things like that uh, building up. And there you go. You take your, your Cobra, click it on with the magnet onto your, your painted base, grab your rotors, which are also magnetized, included with the box, click, right in place. What do you know? Done deal, not too many steps, and... I think that looks great. So it'll look fantastic on the tabletop. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Pause the video here if you need to write this down. As you can see from the list, it's a very manageable uh, amount of colors. Uh, you should be able to paint a squadron of these no problem. Thanks a lot for checking this out. hope it was useful to you. Be sure to check with uh, flamesofwar.com for more hobby tutorials.